Morant with a running start. Elevate. Oh, oh, it does. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh. He's done. High game in overtime. Gasol will turn. into it on the floor with Randolph. Hard to tell if there are any punches being thrown under there, but Griffin took except Adams going long. Moran! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! He hit it! John Moran gets 70! You gotta be kidding me. Welcome to Grits and Grinds, a Memphis Grizzlies podcast. My name is... Keith Parrish, the Grizzlies have announced another dreaded medical update. This one coming essentially on the eve of training camp. They announced that Vince Williams Jr. will be out for the next four weeks. We'll miss all of preseason. We'll miss the start of the regular season. Yet another blow for a Grizzlies team trying to bounce back from a nightmare season. This is a particularly painful announcement for this podcast. Vince Williams Jr., probably my favorite Grizzlies player. So I'm recording this episode on Monday morning, September 30th. Today is Grizzlies Media Day in Memphis. I'm in Nashville. But I figured we had to go ahead and hit this update before we start getting the news from Media Day later on this afternoon. So, today's episode, going to talk about Vince Williams Jr. Before I do, just want to let you know, if you want to play fantasy basketball with me, if you want to join my negative fantasy basketball league, the International Stackhouse of Pancakes Negative Fantasy League, it's a fantasy league with a lot of players where you get points for bad things. You get points for missed shots and turnovers and fouls, and it is a hoot. It is a lot of fun to play. It is available for my Patreon supporters. For those of you supporting me at $5 a month over at patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast, my goal is to get 40 players this year in the league. Last year we had 34. The year before that was 36. So let's get up to that magical number of 40 participants. It's a whole lot of fun. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up. If you want to play, go to patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. All right. Vince Williams Jr. has a stress reaction in his leg going to be out the next four weeks. This comes on the heels of Gigi Jackson being out for at least the first month or so of the season. I mean, Gigi might return near Christmas. Hopefully Vince returns early November, at the very end of October, perhaps, if he comes back right after the four weeks where they said he's going to be re-evaluated. The bottom line for the Grizzlies, the one bullet point takeaway, this is going to sound maybe more dire than it is. I don't know. Maybe this is dire. For me, the big takeaway is, right now, the Grizzlies have nine healthy players on standard NBA contracts who have played in the NBA before. And they start their season playing six games in the first nine days. They have two sets of back-to-backs in their first six games. Now, the less dire way to say that is we still look pretty good when healthy. We do have some depth to replace Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams Jr. All of the presumed starters are still available. John Conchar can step up and play minutes as the ninth or 10th man. And of course, Zach Eady supposed to be great. Supposed to step in and immediately help. But right now, after the Derrick Rose retirement and the Vince Williams Jr. injury news, we're looking at 11 players on this roster who are healthy. Two of them are rookies, Jalen Wells and Zach Eady. One of them, Brandon Clark, is about 19 months removed from an Achilles tear. 
One of them is Marcus Smart, who over the last five seasons misses on average 30 games per year. This team has not much depth. Yes, eventually they will add another body. Do they add a forward because of the injuries to their forward room? Is that a term, forward room? I don't know. Makes sense when you say point guard room or quarterback room. Um, They are so thin. And what happens early in the year if Zach Eady misses a game? Are they going to play Zach Eady both nights of a back-to-back? Does Marcus Smart play back-to-backs? Does John Morant play back-to-backs? Does Jaron Jackson Jr. play back-to-backs? Right now, I think the concern with the Grizzlies is um, beyond the fact that the West is very, very tough and competitive and the Grizzlies are by no means guaranteed to finish in the top six in the West. It's supposed to be so tight this year, and I agree with that assessment, that every little setback can be a big deal. You don't want to finish in the play-in. And I do think this setback, it's way bigger of a deal than Gigi Jackson's setback for me personally, not just because I love Vince Williams Jr. I feel like Vince was going to be competing for a starting spot. I feel like a lot of my hopes for the Grizzlies and the way all their lineups fit together, it's because you have Vince Williams Jr. tying it all together. We already saw last year that Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr. minutes, not ideal. Kind of rough offensively. Now, Ja Morant's going to come back. We haven't seen all those guys play together outside of a very, very, very small sample size. Ja Morant, it should be fine with Ja, Desmond, Jaron, and Marcus. Those are the most important things. Having Zach Eady available, that's more important than Vince Williams Jr. But my hopes of the Grizzlies being a 50-win team were based on Vince being a very important part of the rotation, playing 25 minutes a game. And Vince is supposed to be back. Again, very soon into the season, Vince hopefully going to be back. But right now, it's kind of tough. And also, if you look at the roster, I think there is a just massive question now more than before this Vince injury about just the shooting on the roster. There are two players on this team who are good three-point shooters. Cross our fingers, rookies Cam Spencer and Jalen Wells are good three-point shooters. Like Vince, maybe his three-point percentage was not real last year. He shot around 38%. I'm not sure if I believe it. But right now, with no GG, with no Vince, you look at the healthy players on this team and you look at the shooters. You have two elite three-point shooters in Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain. And then you have John Morant, 32% career. Jaron Jackson Jr., who has one season where he shot the three-pointer well. Jaron shooting 33% over the last three full seasons. He's 35% from three in his career. Marcus Smart, 32% career three-point shooter. Santi Aldama, 33% career three-point shooter. Jake LaRavia has shot 34% in his 70 career games. John Conchar shot 33% from three. The last two seasons, he's 36% for his career. Zach Eady, yes, they're saying Zach Eady hits threes in pickup, but are you going to believe in that? Then Brandon Clark doesn't shoot. That's every player. And then there's Scotty Pippen Jr. Scotty shot the three-pointer well last year in the regular season. He shot three-pointers terribly every other season of basketball he's played. In college, in the G League, and in summer league, Scotty Pippen Jr., not a good three-point shooter. Last year in the regular season, arguably the most important sample size, he did shoot it well. But right now, this team has two shooters. They have very little size. And they're a little bit thin on the wing. Also, you don't have a really proven backup point guard. I know we keep tapping the sign. When healthy, they should be fine. And you can still say it right now. I made up a rotation that I feel pretty good about. Like you're going to start Ja, 
Desmond, Marcus, Jaron, and Zach. There is no longer a debate over the starting lineup, I don't think. Is it going to be an open competition between Jalen Wells and Marcus Smart? Looks like Marcus Smart definitely going to start at the three now. Then your bench, okay. Luke Kennard, we still feel good about Luke and Brandon Clark and Santi Aldama. And then John Conchar can step up. Every time John Conchar plays, usually good things happen. Scotty Pippen Jr., maybe he's part of that 10-man rotation. Maybe they do that point guard by committee that I talk about. Off the bench, you have someone like you know Luke Kennard, and they stagger Marcus or Desmond to play with the bench unit. And then like Jake LaRavia plays alongside John Conchar. Or maybe Jalen Wells gets an opportunity early on. And like that rotation looks good. You still have your, your best players. You have some okay bench players. That should be fine. But again, the issue goes to you play six games in the first nine days. What if anyone gets hurt? What if Jaron Jackson Jr. misses a basketball game? What if Zach Eady misses a basketball game? I think right now, I think Vince might be that important where if Jaron misses a basketball game, that's going to be a struggle. I think if Zach Eady misses a basketball game, it's going to feel a lot like last season. It's going to feel a lot like the playoff series against the Lakers. I worry about getting dominated on the glass. So I know it's not dire in the sense that Gigi Jackson and Vince Williams Jr. are both super young and they're coming back relatively soon. But it is certainly a blow to the optimism and the excitement level of Grizzlies fans heading into the season. And specifically, I mean, maybe subjectively, but if you had to ask me specifically, which players do you think it's the most important that they are available for training camp? I ask you that question. What do you think? Here's my answer. I've thought about it for a while. One, Zach Eady. I think it's most important to the Grizzlies that Zach Eady be healthy for training camp. Beyond that, I think I would have said Vince Williams Jr., two, Gigi Jackson, three, maybe Marcus Smart, four. I want to see how Marcus Smart works with Ja Morant and Desmond Bain. Haven't seen it. But beyond Zach Eady, I feel like this training camp was the most important for Vince Williams Jr. and Gigi Jackson. This is the first training camp either one of them was going to have where they were on standard contracts. It was the first time they would go into a training camp with expectations of playing time, with expectations for fighting for bigger roles. I think in Vince Williams Jr.'s case, he absolutely was going to be in a competition to be the starting small forward. Maybe Gigi Jackson was going to be in competition for the starting small forward. Maybe he had a shot at that too. At the very least, Gigi and Vince are important parts of the Grizzlies rotation when the team is fully healthy. And this early in their careers, I feel like to have this training camp taken away, plus there's a whole new coaching staff there, I feel like it was so important for these young guys to get this training camp. Now they lose that, and that's just bad luck. It will create opportunities for others, like Jalen Wells will get a longer look. It's going to be an opportunity for some guys to just play preseason basketball games. Uh, Yuki Kawamura, go play some preseason games. Maljina Pereira, go soak up some preseason minutes. Jay Huff, what do you got, buddy? Looking at regular season games, though, without Vince Williams Jr., without Gigi Jackson, I think the beneficiaries of playing time, the obvious ones are the forwards left standing on the roster. John Conchar, we need you to play again. Jake LaRavia, Jalen Wells both have an opportunity, I think, to earn a lot more playing time while Vince and Gigi are out. Also, I think one of the beneficiaries as far as increased playing time is going to be Luke Kennard. I came up with a 10-man rotation, what my best guess for what the lineup will look like on opening night. I played a bench unit of Scotty Pippen Jr., Luke Kennard, Santi Aldama, Brandon Clark, and then I said, pick one 
of John Conchar, Jake LaRavia, or Jalen Wells. I would guess that's what's going to happen when they play 10 deep. Now they might, again, they might not play Scottie Pippen Jr. That's the thing I'm the least confident about when I did this 10-man rotation. Maybe your five guys used off the bench. Maybe it's Luke Kennard, Santi, and Brandon. And then you use two of John Conchar, Jake LaRavia, or Jalen Wells. That makes sense to me. But I think Luke gets the benefit of some extra playing time. I had him playing 23 minutes per game, which is not really what I anticipated him playing when this team was fully healthy. The last couple of seasons, he's averaged around 24, 25, 26 minutes per game. But those have been under unusual circumstances. A lot of that was based on injuries. When the full team was healthy, he wasn't normally at 24, 25 minutes a game. Now I think it's very likely until Vince Williams Jr. comes back that maybe they trend towards a little bit more small ball, but also they're going to frequently play Luke Kennard off the bench. And again, when I look at this rotation, I feel confident in it. It's very, very good. The issue just comes up. What happens when you're playing your third game in four nights? which, oh, by the way, happens the first four nights of the season. What happens when these games add up when Marcus Smart isn't available? All of a sudden, you're going pretty deep into the bench. So it's just very frustrating for me. The The overall lack of depth, hopefully they will address it at some point, either promoting Scottie Pippen Jr., adding another two-way guy who you feel like can actually give you regular season minutes. But right now, man, they're, they're going to be shopping, I think, for players who are just available and healthy and who we think can contribute. One of the names I mentioned last episode, Chuma Okeke, already got waived as the Knicks are making a blockbuster move to get Carl Anthony Towns, like Chuma Okeke, wing with size. Uh, can't really shoot. He's available. Um, one guy who was available got picked up, Nasir Little. Uh, the Heat are taking a flyer on him. There are going to be players waived from training camps. We will monitor, of course, what the Grizzlies do as they've lost yet another crucial player. And again, the the bad luck of losing like the two young guys from last year that everyone's the most excited about. It does certainly feel like, uh, perhaps there is a curse afoot that has afflicted the Grizzlies. Anyways, in a slightly happier news, Nike dropped a new Ja Morant ad campaign ahead of the release of his Ja twos which come out this week. So check that out. The theme of the promotional video was about Ja getting back up, picking himself up after getting knocked down. So everything is set for the Ja Morant Redemption Tour. Everything is set up for the Memphis Grizzlies bounce back season. We just can't endure very many more of these injuries. And with that, I will end this episode. Hopefully I get it out to you before media day even begins the festivities. I believe they broadcast some stuff live around 1030 central time this Monday morning. Then on Tuesday, the Grizzlies begin training camp in Nashville, Tennessee. I will be covering bits of that. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and to my podcast channel to get the latest updates and analysis. And with that, I say thanks for listening. Hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Go Grizz.